For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Father, again, we just want to pause and thank you for this day. And I just thank you for all these folks that's come today. I thank you for this country. And I, we pray, God, you will not give up on us. And I pray that you begin to deal on uh, men and women, boys and girls' hearts about coming to know you as Lord and Savior. And I, I pray that they'll just step in on faith and do that and accept that. We ask for help. We ask for your blessings. You've already told us in your scriptures that we that you've given us all spiritual blessings, but sometimes we need health blessings and financial blessings to be added in bonus. So we ask for that. And again, we thank you. Bless this service. Help me. Help me behind the cross this morning. Help me deliver your message according to your will and your purpose. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. May be seated. Now, there's two qualifications for taking the Lord's Supper. And I've had people kind of argue with me about this. I mean, they just wasted my time arguing with me. I don't argue with me. Uh, well, let me take that back. My family, I do. But with anybody else, I don't. Okay? I do argue with my family sometimes. But anybody else, I don't. I just say, here's what I'm just telling you with Scripture. If the Lord's Supper is a church ordinance, and the New Testament in the book of Acts teaches that they were baptized and then joined the church. Why is it that people have a problem with that baptism is part, one part of the taking the Lord's Supper? Two parts of it. One, first you've got to be saved. Salvation comes first. And then the baptism. And how could you even begin to understand his Jesus' death and burial and him coming out of the grave by not experiencing baptism yourself, you see. So it just makes sense that those are right. Uh, so I can you, you put all the phone calls about on that. <laughs> I mean, I get phone calls about it. every time I do this service. Somebody calls me about those two things. So that's just the best I can explain it and about it. You have to look at the book of Acts on it that it is okay. So I want to clarify that with you. And then we get who, uh, who is worthy to take it. That's what scares everybody to death about the Lord's Supper. Oh, I'm not worthy. Oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to take the Lord's Supper. And that's, guess what? You're right. You're not worthy. And that's not what it's talking about here anyway. It's not if we're worthy. That's not the question here. Who, who is worthy to take the Lord's Supper? No one. We are made worthy through the blood of Jesus Christ. But that's not yet even what that's talking about, being worthy. You're going to see this word again. It's an unworthy. It's an adverb word. It's an action word. It's how we take it. And how kind of mind that we take it in. And what, and what we're thinking about when we take it in. Because here's what you'd have to say if you think you're worthy. If you thought you was worthy to take it, you'd have to say that you're perfect. Now, I could never take it then. I know I'm not perfect. I know I, my life is not perfect. So I could never take the Lord's Supper if it was that, if it was talking about being worthy to take it. Only way I'm worthy is because of what Jesus Christ has done. He's counted me as righteous. That's what he's imputed to me, righteousness. And that word is like uh, giving credit to. He's saying, Gary, as I see you, you're righteous because of what Jesus Christ has done in your life. But, I, but it, does that make me perfect right now on this earth? See, that's, that's the problem that people have with it. They think they've got to be perfect to take the Lord's Supper. To even think that would be a sin. To even think that you're perfect and good enough to take the Lord's Supper would be a sin. Because then you're saying you're above sin. You're, you're, you're everything okay. So that's not what you're talking about. Okay? We, so who is worthy to take it? No one. 
the church in Corinth, what the problem was, there was disorder. There was divisions in the church. Uh, we have that in verses 17 through 22. So there was disorder, in the, especially in the Lord's Supper. How do we know that? And Paul said, I, I, this I declare to you, I praise you not that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. Well, at least they were still coming together. You can say that much about it. <laughs> they, they, you, can, you could say, for what they, good or bad, they would come together. And let me tell you something. That's what I would do. If, if I know the Lord wanted me in a place, I wouldn't let anything hinder me from being there. I'd still go like that's what I thought the Lord wanted me to do. If that's the place the Lord wanted me to go, and that's the place that God wanted me in, I would, I would still and I'd stay the course, whatever I believe, whatever I do. But there's a reason for that. He, um, in verse 19, listen to what the reason for this thing is. You, it's being approved. That's why you ought to thank God for every problem, every church that's ever been or ever will be ought to get down on her knees and thank God for every problem that you've had. Because in that you find out who's approved. You find out how, how it works and who it is. All right. uh, you won't know if, if everything's going good. You can't tell. I, I've seen that happen. Uh, I had a discipline. Uh, one of the church members one time in the church. Uh, because every time, every time there's a problem brought up, guess he was right in the middle of it. So I said to him one day, I said, look, I want to ask you a question. Are you saved? He said, what made you ask that? I said, because we're having problems and every time you are the very one in the middle of it. You've never been on the side that's been, if that's right. You've always been right in the middle of it trying to stir it up and make it worse. And I said, that is not a, a Christian-like attitude. So I'm asking you personally, are you saved? He Got mad at me and left the church. And the church that he joined, the pastor come and jumped on me for saying, why did you send him to my church for? Because <laughs> he did the same thing there. You will not know, or will not know, or he will not be made evidence who's really trying to serve God unless you have problems. Unless it happens. You see? So don't ever... You know, get discouraged when problems come and say, thank God that you're going to be on it. Because guess what? We'll find out who to prove. We'll find out truly who, who wants to serve God, who really wants to do it. John said it like this. He said, they were not of us or they were continued with us. There's a bunch of people in John's church, uh, St. John's church, that they left. And he said, listen, if they were of us, they would continue with us. Don't get upset about it. Don't, don't worry about it. People leaving, people doing, they're not of us anymore. Okay? So they're not, not approved. Or, you know, it was happening with them. So we see in verses uh, 17 through 22, we see this about this disorder on it because they were people. Here's what was happening. Us mountain people, we, we don't understand this. If we invite you as a mountain person to come meet with us, we mean it, right? We're not trying to be polite. We're, we're actually wanting you to come. Because if we don't want you, we don't ask you. <laughs> but I mean, that's just where it is. Um, but I've been in places where people ask me to come and be with but they really didn't want me. They were just trying to be polite. And I said, listen, if you don't want me, don't ask me. Okay? You won't hurt my feelings if you don't ask me. But don't act, because guess what? If you ask me to come and eat with you, guess what? I'm liable to do it. I'm liable to show up ready to eat. I had a, a, a I was in down south of Florida, and some people said, Preacher, come and, and eat uh, dinner with us. I grew up with breakfast, dinner, and supper. Their dinner is at 6 o'clock in the evening. When I showed up at 12 o'clock at their house, they said, what are you doing here now? I said, I couldn't be dinner. They said, no, dinner's 6 o'clock this evening. 
I slept. I thought lunch was something that you eat between breakfast and dinner, and after dinner and before supper. That's what I thought lunch was. I thought lunch was just snack time. You know, after I grew up having a big breakfast, and my mother fixed a big dinner, and she fixed a big supper. You know, so, and I, so you have to be careful how you ask people, you know, because you better clarify what you're talking about. We're talking about the Lord's Supper here, okay? It was done at night, it was done in the evening, okay? It's when it was done, when the Lord done it. And one of the things we want to look at about why are we doing it? Why are we doing the Lord's Supper today? Why am I doing the Lord's Supper? It's made me to remember two things. Okay? And that's found in 26. Uh, and look at verse 26 just for a minute. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. What I'm doing is, I'm recognizing that Jesus died on the cross for me. I'm remembering that. That that's why I'm saved, is because of His sacrifice, His blood was shed, and that He's coming back. That's what I mean. That's discerning the Lord's body. I'm discerning that the Lord died for me. I'm not perfect yet, but He's working on me. I'm allowing Him to work on me. And I'm putting him there to help me to get through it. Okay? Because that the bread, the broken bread, represents his body being broken. That's what it represents. And Jesus was there. Let me tell you something. Jesus was there present with the disciples when he instituted this and started this. And that doesn't mean that, that we're eating the flesh of Jesus. Because they didn't, sure didn't jump upon him that night. They eat the bread and they drunk the cup. He was there physically with them. That wasn't his blood in the cup and that wasn't his body in the bread. That was symbolic and saying how that it is. Those are the closest things, just like baptism is the closest thing that God could show us on this earth what really happens to us. The watery grave coming out of it. We know that we're going to die one of these days arguing with death is trying to, like seeing a baby argue that I'm not going to be born. It's going to come. Let's raptured out, taken out on it, you're going to die. That's just the way it is. But we as Christians, we're dead. We have been changed. And death has no more dominion over us. So that's what that represents, that we're going to be, uh, that we're alive. Even though we might die physically, our, we're still alive. Our, we're spiritually alive. One of these days, that's going to be united back to it. And that's what it was saying. So there's two things that the Lord suffered us. It looks, it looks what happened back yonder at Calvary and looks what's coming forward again, Jesus Christ. So my life is living in this. Jesus died for me. Guess what? He's coming back and I'll have to look for it. And I'll have to act like it. And I'll have to believe that. Amen. That He's coming back. And that's what it reminds me of. And that's what it should remind us of. And then there's a warning in it in verse 27. He said, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body of the Lord. Now look at that word. It's an adverb word. It's not, it's, a, it's an action word. It's how that we take. See, what was happening to Corinthians, he said, I already talked to y'all about this before. I didn't deliver this message to y'all once before. And that's what that's what we have. He tells us that in the scriptures that he'd already done this before to him. Uh, and how that he delivered in verse 23. He says, For I have received a little of that which also I delivered unto you. He's already talked to them about this. And what they were doing, they they were mixing in the agape meal, love feast, with the Lord's Supper. They were mixing it in and it didn't. It was just like being passed around like during that time and, of, and they wasn't taking time to discern what Christ had done. Because he said, listen, if you had, they wouldn't be people eating with, and people not eating. There'd been a whole thing on that. And they, they, that's what they were doing. There were divisions in there. And he said, that's not the Lord's Supper. That's just like a, a lost person could get, get in the water and go underwater, but then that, that doesn't make them baptized. Because you have to be saved first before you can be baptized. Amen. 
if you're a lost person go in the water uh, as a dry sinner, you just come out as a wet one. Amen. You see, that's how that is. There's, there's nothing. You know, you got to be going. You got to go into the water saved before. And that's symbolic of my death and that we're coming out of it. That's what baptism represents. So why is it that we're so uh, concerned or worried about this, about taking the Lord's Supper? It's because people think they're not worthy, and which is true. We are not worthy. But here's what you have to be careful with. You have to be careful in the kind of manner that you're taking it. When you're taking the Lord's Supper, are you reminded and remembering what Jesus Christ has done in your life and what He's still trying to do and that He's coming back. I, will, I want to tell you something. I'll confess to you right now. I am not perfect. Don't tell Susie that. You know, but I'm not. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just not that. I'm just not a right writer yet. But guess what? I know that Jesus died for me and uh, for all the sins, and he's trying to help me, and trying to get me, and he's still working on me. I have, I've been saved. I am now being sanctified. That means an ongoing process. He's working on me. I'm being sanctified daily. I'm growing closer. I'm, I'm trying. I'm learning more. I'm trying to do better. This is what Jesus Christ has done. So that's what I'm remembering. What his death on the cross was not in vain. It was there for me. So, I'm discerning the Lord's body in this when I'm taking the Lord's Supper. I'm remembering what Jesus Christ did on Calvary. I remember that also in, in thinking about that. He's coming back again. And he's not through. <coughs> he's still coming. He's still got work to do is come back and get his church. Get the same people. So, he's going to do that. So, that's what it means when it says unworthily. And we take it unworthily. You're just taking it not even thinking about it. Right? anything. You see, I'm reminded that I'm the center of this. So let's look at, to prove that point, let's look what the Bible says. Not what I say, but what the Bible says, okay? That's found in verse 28 of chapter 11, uh, chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians chapter 8. It says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Notice that what it said. Examine yourself and and it, it didn't say examine yourself and don't eat, did it? No. Here's, what, here's how important that is. If you miss don't miss this. Here's how important that verse is. Me as a Christian who have, been, who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and I have followed Him and been obedient to His command and been, followed Him in baptism and, and experienced that, watery grave and coming out and knowing what Jesus Christ has done in my life. If I was to say as a Christian, I'm not going to take the Lord's Supper, I have put Him to an open chain. I am saying, Lord, I don't want You in my life to help me get over that. But Lord, there's a sin in my life. Okay, Gary, I know it. But I'm just going to try to help You get over it. That's why I died for You. You see how important that verse is? It didn't say, after talking about being unworthily, and then it says, um, but it uses the word but in that. It means a different direction. But let a man examine himself. That's what it's for. I examine myself. And so let him, then it says, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Why? Because I am not perfect. I can examine myself in, in, in a microsecond I can realize I'm not perfect. But one thing I am, I am in Christ. Amen. I am in Jesus Christ. And He is within me. And because of that, I can take the Lord's Supper and, and have faith and believing and knowing that Christ is going to help me. Because I'm I realize that the whole point of this thing is because of what Jesus Christ has done. It's not what I have done or not done. It's what Jesus Christ has done. You see, how, see the difference in that? An unworthy man and being worthy. Not worthy. An unworthy man will just take it and say, well, you know, I, I 
and just take it. It becomes too common to us and we don't think about what Jesus Christ did. But no, let me tell you something. I come this morning in fear and trembling knowing that I am not perfect. And there is problems in my life. There is sin in my life that I need help with. And the only way I'm going to get help with it is through Jesus Christ. I am never going to be uh, good enough to take the Lord's Supper on my own. That's why I need Jesus Christ. That's why I'm glad that He died on the cross for my sins and I, that He's coming back. And I need that in my life to help me to grow as a Christian. So then I can examine myself. And as soon as I examine myself, I can find out that I'm not perfect. But then I can eat of it because of what Jesus Christ has done. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. That Jesus wants to help you with your problem. Help you with your sin. To overcome. To say that, to, to not take it would be to say, Lord, I don't want you in my life. I've actually been in churches where the preacher has said, if our sin in your life, we're having the Lord's Supper, we want you to leave. And don't take the Lord's Supper. And I've actually seen people get up and leave. And I wanted to go to the door and stop and say, no, 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 that's not what God wants you to do. God wants you to... Can know that if you know that you're sin, He wants you to come to Jesus Christ because He can help you overcome that. Amen. That's what this is all about. And see, we miss that point. We kind of run from it. And I know, and I have been guilty of that and said that, and people said that. But I want to tell you something. To really understand this is that we are not. Because, you see, if I was to say that I'm without sin, and that would be a sin. That's what the Bible says. If we say we have no sin, we're liars. So, so it's, it's not being worthy that, that we have to worry about here. It's in the manner that you take it. What you're thinking about. How that you're dealing with it. That you're saying, Lord, I know there's a sin in my life. And I'm expecting you to help me to get through because I can't overcome it in myself. I'm not strong enough to do it on myself. And you're going to have to help me overcome it. That's what He wants you to do. That's exactly what he, Jesus Christ wants you to do. So, and worthy of In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 and 7, here's what we have to look at. It said, examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith. He said, Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. See, if you're a Christian, don't you know that Jesus is in you? That, that, and that's what you have to understand. But I trust that you shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should peer approve, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be repro as reprobates. You see, I have no other choice. It doesn't make any difference how anybody else acts or what anybody else does. I have no choice to act like a Christian. That's exactly what God wants me to do. You see, we react to people. Now, people react to us, then we react back to them. What we're supposed to do is, whatever somebody says or does on it, I still got to say the right thing and do the right thing. That's what Paul's saying here. Even though, he said, even though we are reprobate, still you just got to do the honest thing. Right? Right. right. Am I going to start over? No. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to check on you. Make sure you're awake. You see, and that, that's the great news on it. Now the warning. Here's the warning. Okay. Not deserving the Lord's body. That's the one. And it causes suffering. It causes, it causes bring it on yourself. You're not going to affect me. I'm not going to affect you. Okay? It's, it's, it's how, how you take this thing. It's dependent upon it. It's going to affect you on it. Okay? One way or the other. We are to judge our own self that we would be not judged. If we would take inventory of our own life and everything and see how it is on it and start trying to straighten those things out, then other, we wouldn't have to be, have a judge. But you see, I'm not capable of doing that other than through the Holy Spirit of God to help me to overcome that. 
And because of that, then I, I'm not condemned. I'm not, I'm not given punishment on it. Because if, I, if I'm correcting those things, is that the way we do our children? If our children come to me and, and told me something that they did, that I told them not to do, I would say, okay, well, you know, and they got to do it more. Okay, it's good. But if I had to correct them, judgment falls on them. <laughs> you see? If, I, if they're not going to change and not going to do it, then judgment falls on them. But if they come and confess and want to do that, that's what Christ wants us to do. I have to confess to Christ today that there is a problem of sin in my life. It's more than just a problem. It is, it's sin. I mean, I, you, you may be without sin, but I'm not. But I am still worthy to take it because of what Jesus Christ has done. Why? I'm discerning what the body of Christ did. That he, His body was broken on that cross. And His blood was shed. And that's a new contract between me and God now. That's God saying, this is the contract I have with you. So when He looks at me, He looks at me through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm counted worthy but by the blood of Jesus Christ. So that his body was broken for me and that, he, that His blood was shed for me. His death on the cross was for my salvation. Him coming out of the grave that He's coming back was for my, to help me to know that one of these days I'm going to be glorified. I'm not reached that yet. I'm not reached that glorification yet. But it's coming. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Okay. If they ever head back, whenever I show up, here's some more. Maybe you're here today and You've never been saved or followed the Lord in baptism. Wouldn't this be a great day to do that for the next time that we have the Lord's Supper? That you can partake of that and be part of that. And grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That even though you've not reached perfection yet, Christ still loved you so much that He died on the cross for you. That His blood was shed for you. And you're trusting in Jesus Christ every day to keep you where you need to be. When you fail, and when I fail, we can come to Him. Not as saying, Lord, I don't need you, but Lord, I need you. I need you to help me because I I've messed up. I've sinned. And He helps us. The Bible says He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. That's the promise. Because what Jesus Christ has done. That's the new covenant. That's the contract between you and the Lord. Me and the Lord. Wouldn't it be a great day for you to come and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? God took it on your heart right now. Maybe you're here and you're a Christian and you're worried about taking the Lord's Supper. Don't worry about it. Here's what happens. And I have, I'm going through the same thing. I have to come before Him today and say, God, I, I need your help. And I'm trusting what Jesus Christ did on the Calvary. That his blood, body was broken and that his blood was shed for my sins. And that he's still working on me. And I need your help to overcome sin, problems, temptations and things in my life. And I'm trusting in you to get me through that. Today. So Father, we thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.